Good evening, everyone. If we would stand for Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the October 17th regular Milford Planning and Zoning Board meeting. If I could have roll call from my left, please. Good evening, I'm Brian Collegian. Mike Dolan. Nancy Austin. Jim Quish. Rick Verone. Tom Nickel. And I'm Board Chair Scott Marlowe, and we're joined by David Sulka, City Planner, and Meg Green. Um, first item of business is I would uh, entertain um, reordering the agenda slightly. We want to, uh, under new business, do item one, then three, and we're going to hold off on uh, two until we go to the public hearing uh, for item D2 because they're both tied together. So if I could uh, get a motion on that. Mr. Quish, second. Mr. Dolan, all in favor? Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. So first item of business under new business is item one, 8-24 review for a five-year lease on property at 25-27 River Street, map 54, block 397, Lots four through five of which the city of Milford is the owner. Uh, is there anyone, Mr. Sulkis? Uh, Mr. Uh, Fernandez is here, who I believe is uh, the gentleman who, would, who uh, has asked for the lease from the city. So he can come on up. Good evening. If you could just state your name and address. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, I'm David Fernandez, and I live at uh, 15 River Street, right here in Mifold. Thank you. Do you want to just go over the, um, what you're seeking? Uh, yes, I am uh, seeking a lease uh, on the city property under the trees, just to visualize where it is, in order to build a, a, a deck uh, for the use of the, for the restaurant use. All right. Thank you. Mr. Sulkis. Yeah, so what's happening is uh, Mr. Fernandez, for those of you who don't know, um, has a Bistro Basque on River Street. And, and uh, Bistro Basque uh, is uh, in one location, and then Mr. Fernandez actually owns the buildings that are next to Bistro Basque and utilizes uh, the patio going behind all of those buildings uh, for the restaurant. So um, he's approached the city, and they have come to uh, an agreement uh, for uh, building a, a, a patio uh, basically next to where the uh, Eli's patio is, uh, which would get access uh, through that uh, existing uh, patio in those buildings. Are there questions from the board? Mr. Nickel. The uh, drawing that I have here uh, indicates the patio goes from your restaurant behind your other three buildings and uh, on my site review, I saw that that area is completely filled with tables and chairs. Uh, so you would be carrying your food from your restaurant through that area to the patio? Um, the communication was not very clear, but I believe you're asking me if I will bring the food through the back? That's what I said. You're going to bring okay, the no, food to, to the back? Yes, yes. And if in case there was any kind of an emergency, how would these people in these other three buildings get out of their buildings with all these chairs and tables behind there? Um, the, so you're talking in, in my, uh, on my property, the deck and the, the patio on my property? Is that what you're, you're talking about? The chairs that you're looking I, at? I understand it's your property. I'm just asking, if you were gonna sell the middle building there and people had to get out of there, would that patio still be there? 
Oh, they, they, uh, the normal uh, flow for uh, emergency is through the right of way we have uh, through Eli property on, Dan on to Daniel Street. That's the normal uh, uh, expectation for uh, once you're out of the building to exit in a, no uh, in a, a safe uh, way. So it's not showing there. Uh, if the people are on the deck, they will exit, I imagine, uh, uh, the way they came to it, but the, the one that are on my uh, property, they will continue exiting uh, in case of emergency through the right of way, through uh, Eli's uh, driveway. Would you be uh, leaving the two trees there? Oh, yes, of course, yes. You would? Oh, yes, of course. You're welcome. <coughs> Are there other questions from the board? Okay, see, thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing no other questions, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Brown. Uh, I make a motion that we accept the proposal. Mr. Brown made a motion. I'll Is there a second? It. Mr. Nichols, second. Um, we're going to take a, a, a vote on this, so, Mr. Collegian? For or against? The I'm motion. in favor of the motion. Ms. Austin? With the motion. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Dolan. Uh, in favor. Ms. Austin, you said in favor. Uh, Mr. Question? In favor of the motion. Mr. Brown? In favor of the motion. Mr. Nickel? In favor. And I'm in favor as well. So motion passes. Thank you. Next item of business is item three, 36 Cherry Street, um, RO District petition of um, Dominic Thomas Esquire for an amendment to site plan review to construct an addition to an existing building on map 65, block 822, parcel 43, of which 26 Cherry Street Associates LLC is the owner. Good evening. Uh, yes, uh, Attorney Dominic Thomas, Conan Thomas, 315 Main Street, Derby, Connecticut. Representing the applicant, 26 Cherry Street, LLC, which is the new, uh, the contract owner. If I may approach, uh, uh, I have, uh, there's some uh, packet here of uh, photographs for the uh, board members, which uh, are an aerial uh, view, a couple of street views, and then some photographs of the interior of the uh, uh, property that we are before you for a uh, amendment to the existing site plan. If somebody got the mistakenly printed black and white one, just ask for the color one. Uh, John, I think the chairman got it, the mistakenly black, the black and white one, or did you, or, or no? No, yours, you have the colored one? Okay, because there's one that I printed out wrong, so I just want to make sure nobody gets it. Um, a little history of the site. Uh, in 1995, this was approved, uh, I'm assuming at that point, when as the properties transformed from residences to uh, professional office. The site was approved in 1995 as a site plan for professional office use uh, for the law offices uh, of, um, I think at that time, Stevens Moran, M Stevens Moran Carroll and Carbath, I believe, may have been the law firm, and has been used as law offices ever since that time. The law firm has been, uh, was, as I'm sure you're familiar, the, uh, it eventually split up, but it was a client or uh, oriented law firm. Um, I presented you with photos of the site. The first one is a, an aerial view, Google aerial view, to give you an overview of the site. I don't have to explain to you the familiarity that the whole neighborhood is one made up mainly of professional offices, uh, medical, dental, uh, and other professional offices. The next two photographs, uh, so you understand, are street view photographs to give you an idea um, uh, at a couple angles of the existing building the existing uh, driveway, which abuts the driveway of the property adjacent to it. And then the next series of photographs are basically a picture of the rear of the building, which 
Uh, Mr. Wickle will explain to you uh, we're proposing an addition to the rear of the building to accommodate the um, uh, uh, new uh, purchasers. And, uh, and then there's a series of photographs taken in a circle as you go around the back of the building uh, showing the, uh, bar the garage, which is uh, intended to be demolished. You can make out possibly the demolition notice, which has reached at its 90-day point at this present time. And you can see also the rear of the building where there is some older fencing, uh, not too much buffering, and the dumpster lying in the back. And then you can see some of the natural foliage along the other side of the uh, parking lot. Um, the uh, clients are before you with a proposal to modify the site plan by putting a small addition onto the rear of the building, by removing the garage, it is their intention to add parking. It is their intention to increase the landscaping. It is their intention to provide, a more, uh, provide more of a rear buffer with uh, a better fencing than that which exists. And that is to make it more compliant. It cannot be, a lot of these properties cannot be totally compliant with your regulations as they evolved since the professional offices came in, but our goal is to make it more compliant. And in that vein, also providing a prop proper dumpster enclosure for the property. The two professional offices and the principals of uh, 26 Cherry Street LLC uh, are uh, Jeffrey Wasikowski, who's an attorney whose practice is primarily real estate, and Financial Network Limited, whose principal is Michael Del Rey, and who offer a variety of financial services to individuals and businesses. Both of them are uh, currently located at offices on Wheeler's Farm Road and wish to remain in Milford and saw this as an opportunity to stay here and to go downtown. Uh, we have submitted a statement of use. Um, hopefully you have reviewed it, which spells out the buildings, the number of employees, and how we've uh, addressed it. Uh, if you have any questions on the statement of use, uh, uh, Mr. Del Rey and Attorney Wysokowski are present to answer any of your questions. Uh, my clients believe it's an appropriate use and the application and plans have been reviewed by your city departments with no adverse comments. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, architect John Wicko, who can explain to you the architectural changes that are taking place and the engineering of the site. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, John Wicko, office at 50 Broad Street in Milford. I'll just run through the plans that were distributed to you guys. Uh, quickly, some of the high points. Um, Location, uh, we do have an R5 behind, that's the buffer area that we're improving. We're buffering that zone, residential. Um, uh, Fred D'Amico did the site work uh, for us and he prepared, which I can go over, the uh, existing condition survey which shows um, the, uh, the house, the, um, the drives, the walks, and note the, uh, the, the garage that is going to be removed. That's the vast area of our improvements to the site. Um, I think I'll do an abbreviated version. The uh, proposed um, site plan uh, shows the addition in the shaded area at the rear. The, the front is remaining uh, untouched. Driveways and walks in the front are all in the same location. Uh, we are proposing a new handicap ramp and improvements to the parking lot um, by adding, uh, I think there's three more spaces that we're adding. Um, our calculation is on this site. It's a f the new and, you, um, new and existing is 4,748 square feet, which requires 19 spaces, which are provided there. We're also able to, um, to pull the parking away from the side park uh, property line and also the, the rear um, property line to achieve uh, more of a that residential buffer. We also have the a compliant um, uh, refuse um, enclosure that meets the four foot uh, accessory structure setback. Um, all the coverages and building coverage and lot coverage work. Everything looks good. Landscaping, we are, um, you know, showing some more buffer 
Um, we're not meeting the 10 foot across the whole back for just for vehicular circulation, but we are vastly improving the existing um, lot. I think one of the photographs shows that the pavement goes right up to the fence. So we're, we're able to kind of enhance that, but we are providing the six foot fence anyways, which is one other version of um, acceptance if, um, or compliance if you guys accept that. So we're kind of doing both to, to, to provide a nice buffer um, in that area. We, all are also, we are also um, putting some vegetation around the, um, the dumpster enclosure. And here is that dumpster enclosure detailed where it's a framed um, uh, wall with the, the um, horizontal clapboard siding and a substantial uh, gate towards the front with the rollout containers. Um, architecturally, the um, first and second floor plan are in sheet A1. There is a shaded areas which highlight the, the, um, the additional space uh, on the first floor, the conference room and private office. Second floor, um, we're building out over the existing conference room flat roof and this is the, the portion that is added um, has two private offices there. Plus there's also um, interior modifications, alterations to, to suit the, the user's program and needs. And it's pretty well uh, spelled out pretty clearly. Um, from the exterior, uh, the improvements are mainly in the rear. We're extending the same roof line and detailing of the existing Victorian um, structure. We're maintaining the portico. There's a great photograph in there that shows that. So it's this, that roof kind of just comes out over. Um, it kind of looks like it's always been like that. That's, that's the goal. And then we have the side of, uh, improvements that, that show the detailing, um, some siding bands, and you know, kind of more of the same. Uh, very nicely appointed. Um, and building on that. Existing plans uh, shows what it was and we're kind of you know fixing a lot of the stuff that's happening there. Um, that it's not so nice looking. Um, the existing elevations, there's that one side view I wanted to show you. That's the, that's this. We're kind of you know morphing this flat roofed area and concealing it and kind of enlarging the, the roof lines from that existing gable that's there. Um, everything is working well and I hope I didn't take too long. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. If you have any questions, we'll be prepared to address them and hopefully my clients uh, can be getting a favorable uh, go ahead as soon as possible so they can comply with their contractual obligations. Thank you. Mr. Solkis. Uh, you have my report in front of you. Um, I think this is a, an improvement um, on the property and makes it more compliant. Uh, but the one item, uh, if you do approve this, it, you would be needing to approve is, uh, as was uh, briefly touched on, the reduced rear buffer. Uh, per 3.4.4.2 subsection 5 uh, because it's less than 10 feet from the residential district. And the regulations allow you to uh, approve that reduced buffer as long as there's a fence, and that's what uh, the applicant will be uh, proposing and doing. Thank you. Are there questions from the board members? Mr. Nickel. Yeah, the way I see this, you're going from the handy ramp, which is an open space, there's an open space between the building and the handy ramp, and you're going up two stories. Yes, that, that, that is correct. Okay. And the other thing is uh, that fence in the back is going to be solid. It's not like it. It looks like there was a pass-through there in the, before. Yeah, the, the fence was kind of, it's falling down in certain areas, um, but it will be a, a solid fence at from property to property at our, our portion. You're welcome. With some additional landscape. Thank you. Are there other questions from the board? All right, thank you. All right, seeing none, um, I would entertain a motion from the board. Mr. Nickel. Yeah, I make a motion to approve uh, 26 Cherry Street as stated. Is there a second? Mr. Nichols. I second a motion. 
Mr. Barone, second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, uh, Mr. Kalijian. I'm in favor of the motion. Mr. Dolan. In favor. Ms. Austin. In favor. Mr. Quish. For the motion. Uh, in Barone. favor of the motion. Mr. Nickel. With the motion. And I'm with the motion as well. So motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, next item of business um, is under public hearings. Item one has been postponed till our next meeting. We'll move on to item two, is a proposed text regulation amendment. Petition of Thomas B. Lynch, Esquire, on behalf of Beach Village LLC to amend section 3.17.2.16, paragraph two, and 3.17.2.16, paragraph 4 of the Milford Zoning Regulations to allow mixed use buildings in the CDD 2 zone with less than 20% commercial. Article 3, section 3.17.2.16, paragraph 2 and 4 as follows. In paragraph 2, uh, the wording would be. In case of a lot that is wholly or partially in the AE-12 flood zone and containing four or more acres, the total gross floor area devoted to commercial use shall be 5.5% and the remaining use shall be residential. And under paragraph four, it would read, the balance of the total gross floor area of the buildings in a mixed residential use shall contain one or more of the following uses. Mr. Lynch. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Sulkis. Uh, what we were just discussing is the 5.5%. Uh, that, uh, that is the correct one. That is the correct one. It is the correct number. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just for the record, my name is Thomas Lynch. I'm an attorney with the law firm Lynch, Trimbicki & Boynton. My office is located here in Milford at 63 Cherry Street. And I'm before you tonight uh, presenting this application as well as the next item on your agenda, which is uh, a application to amend the uh, special permit and the site plan that was approved for Beach, uh, Beach Village, which is located at the intersection of Naugatuck Avenue and East Broadway here in Melford. And uh, I apologize for the uh, discussion at the start because we had originally filed an application to amend uh, Section 317 uh, uh, during the summer that had a number of 8% uh, to change the mix between uh, commercial and residential development on the site. <clears throat> and with further discussions with some of the neighbors, an amended regulation was submitted. It was re-advertised, changing it to the number that's before you now, which is 5.5%. So just, you know, the go backwards here a little bit. Some of the board members, I believe Michael and Jim and uh, Tom, were on the board in November of 2015 when we brought an application to you to change the zone regulation uh, as it pertains to mixed-use developments in the CDD2 zone. We brought to you an application to change the regulation that calls for a 20 percent mix uh, uh, the development in such uh, developments in the zone <clears throat> for uh, uh, commercial development and 80 percent for residential development and what we brought to you was a request to change the regulation so that each matter each case could be brought to you on a case-by-case -case basis 
In November of 2015, that application was approved by the board. There was discussion at the time that the vote was taken uh, to actually change the wording to provide, as this regulation uh, change request does, to limit it to such properties that are a minimum of four acres located in the CDD2 zone and also in the AE12 flood zone. And by doing so, that basically limits the effectiveness of this uh, regulation change to this property alone. This property is the only property in the CDD2 zone that meets those two standards. So uh, in November of 2015, the board voted to approve the change. Uh, there were a number of neighbors in the Walnut Street area who then filed an appeal to Superior Court. Actually, Attorney Danielle Burkery is uh, in the audience tonight with some of her clients. Um, and to make a long story short, the application that we're presenting to you tonight is actually a result of negotiations between the parties. Uh, there's a hearing scheduled in Milford Superior Court before Judge Hiller, 10 o'clock on Friday morning, that if this board sees fit to approve these applications tonight, as well as I think the second item on your agenda, was, which is actually consideration of the settlement of that case, uh, then that will allow this zone regulation to be reworded to provide as we've uh, presented to you. Okay, so again, just to go back to what we were talking to you about in uh, 2015, there's two buildings left to be developed in this project. <clears throat> I think you're all familiar with Beach Shore Village. It's turned out to be a very successful project in the Walnut Beach area. And uh, there's now two buildings left to be built. The site plan shows that there's one building on East Broadway that was to be a mixed-use building, and the amendment of the site plan that was approved by the board in 2015 is basically the same as what we're proposing to you to now, tonight. Uh, it will be to allow that building to not be uh, developed as a mixed-use building, but in fact it will contain four residential units. And the argument that I made to you back in 2015 was after Superstorm Sandy and uh, Hurricane Irene, the flood elevation uh, maps were changed so that that portion of the property, uh, the FEMA regulations were changed such that <clears throat> the uh, commercial building uh, or the mixed use with the commercial component on the first floor would not be able to be built. Uh, with the change in the flood map, uh, you know, the first floor development would be below the flood elevation. So now the plans have been uh, reworked by Ray Oliver. Uh, you have uh, copies of them, and they're shown on the site plan. But that building on East Broadway now will have four residential units with garages on the first floor. They're designed to be built within the flood elevation area with the breakaway walls and whatnot. Uh, there's also going to be elevators uh, servicing those four residential units. <clears throat> the part of the proposal that we're now bringing to you tonight is a result of the discussions with the neighbors because some of the, uh, and, and Attorney Berkeley can supplement my comments certainly, but some of the neighbors were concerned that the building on Naugatuck Avenue, uh, if that was changed to all residential, uh, it would affect uh, the ongoing viability and the ongoing development that's taken place down in that area um, and not encourage further commercial uh, uh, uses and f commercial businesses to come to the area. Our feeling was that there isn't really a market for that and to make a long story short, the uh, negotiated settlement was to allow the building on East Broadway to be rebuilt uh, completely residential and the building on Naugatuck Avenue to have 3,200 square feet of commercial uh, space on the first floor and then four residential units on the uh, <clears throat> second floor. And my good friend Ron Wasmer uh, from Connecticut Civil Group is here with me tonight. He's going to go through the specifics of the site plan and the changes. Um, it increases the parking actually. Uh, the footprints of the buildings uh, virtually have no change. So these uh, amendments to the site plan really will have no uh, detrimental uh, impact on 
either impervious surface or landscaping or uh, <clears throat> the other amenities that are uh, on the site plan as it was originally approved. So uh, with that said, again, uh, the language change uh, uh, that was approved by the board in 2015 uh, left it on a case-by-case -case basis as a uh, result of the discussions and the agreement with uh, Ms. Mercury and her clients, it now changes the wording of 317 to 16.2 to provide further that in a case of a lot that is wholly or partially in the AE 12 flood zone and containing four or more acres, the total gross area devoted to commercial use shall be 5.5 percent. The remaining use shall be residential. That then dovetails with change to section four of the regulation uh, and it basically leaves it that the total gross area devoted to commercial use shall be the balancing the balance of the uh, of the uh, project so with that said that is the result of almost two years of uh, litigation it was uh, uh, brought to Milford Superior Court. Judge Hiller had originally ruled on this and ruled actually in favor of the uh, appellants. My client uh, brought an appeal to the Connecticut Appellate Court. It's a pending case in the Appellate Court, but now uh, with your board uh, uh, agreeing to this uh, resolution, it'll be presented to uh, Judge Hiller on Friday, and that'll put this to rest. So I'll, let me turn things over to Ron, and he can go through the site plan changes, and then obviously if there's any questions when he's through, we'd be happy to entertain them. Thank you, Attorney Lynch. Evening for the record, Ronald Wasmer, professional engineer, land surveyor at 158 Research Drive, Milford, Connecticut. I'll be very brief, uh, just as I spoke in November 2015. Uh, the vast majority of, of this project is built. All the infrastructure is built. The utilities, roadways, improvements are all done. There is some work that is ongoing on uh, Naugatuck Avenue that we've somewhat suspended while this is being worked out, but that's all been coordinated with Milford Public Works because it's improvements on the street. Uh, I'll just briefly point out the location of the two buildings. You have this set of plans. Um, the building highlighted in red is the building along East Broadway that Tom was referring to, uh, which has remained in its similar proposal of 2015. The building that's highlighted in blue is the building on Naugatuck Avenue, and that's the one that's been now proposed as a mixed-use building. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but other than that, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Mr. Salkis. I just, for clarity of the record, and I want Mr. Lynch just to confirm this, um, this public hearing and the information just presented is for both uh, uh, items to the proposed tax regulation amendment as well as 30 East Broadway, uh, the site plan application. Is that correct, Mr. Lynch? Yes, that's why I stated at the outset if we could entertain both of those uh, in one presentation to you. Okay, good. I didn't, I didn't hear that part at the outset. That's why I just wanted to, to clarify that. You got it. Um, it's exactly as you, you heard. Uh, there's really nothing I can add to it. Uh, uh, my opinion. I believe the uh, the uh, the design, the architectural design of uh, the buildings that are proposed are uh, significantly uh, nicer than what the board originally proposed back when this uh, project was uh, first approved. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? All right. This is a public hearing. So at this time, I would invite anyone that would like to speak in favor of this to please step forward, approach the podium, state your name and address, and if you would keep your comments to about three minutes. Uh, again, anyone in favor? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, my name is <coughs> Bill Shuley. I reside at 22 Beach Shore Drive, which we changed that name. Thank you. Uh, and I'm president 
of the Beach Shore Village uh, Condo Association. Um, was here two years ago uh, for this approval, and we've been waiting for a completion of this project. Uh, many of the residents have reviewed the plans that have been given to us with the uh, residential on Broadway and the commercial mixed unit on Naugatuck. We are all in favor of it. We would like to see this project completed, the sidewalks up Naugatuck completed, and the sidewalks around Monroe with Joy and East Broadway completed. And then we could no longer have construction. And I think uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this project? All right, seeing no one else, uh, at this time, if there was anyone that is against these, uh, this, this motion, these projects, if you would again step forward, state your name and address, and keep your comments to about three minutes. Again, anyone against? All right, seeing none, Attorney Lynch, you have an opportunity to make any other comments? I have nothing further to add and just ask that you make a uh, finding here that this meets, meets the standards and uh, hopefully someone will make an application, I mean, motion to have this approved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'll give the public one last opportunity to speak either for or against this. All right, seeing none, uh, at this time I'd like to close the public hearing. And I would uh, entertain a motion from, from the board. Mr. Quish. I would make a motion to approve with the language as indicated in the public notice. Um, we're, we're looking at items two and three on this, correct? Correct. So there's a, there's a motion by Mr. Quish. Is there a second? Mr. Dolan. Um, is there a discussion on the motion? Just to make sure of what we're, we're looking at here. We're looking at items two and three under the public hearings um, for the text regulation amendments and the, uh, the amendment for special permit. All right. Uh, if there's no questions, we'll vote. Mr. Collegian? I'm, for, I'm in favor of the motion. Mr. Dolan? In favor. Ms. Austin? With the motion. Mr. Quish? With the motion. Mr. Barone? With the motion. Mr. Nickel? With the motion. And I am with the motion as well. So motion passes. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will go back to, it's not a public hearing, but it's under new business, and it's item two, action on proposed settlement agreement for Walnut Beach Association, ETALV plan, uh, versus Planning and Zoning Board of the City of Milford. Dockets AAN-CV-15-6019, uh, I'm sorry, CV-15-6019, Six zero one nine seven six eight dash S and AAN dash CB one six dash six zero one nine eight five five S under Connecticut General Statute eight dash eight uh, paragraph N regarding the property located at thirty East Broadway, Milford, Connecticut. Hearing on Friday, October twentieth. Uh, 2017 at 10 a.m. at the Superior Court for the D Judicial District of Milford, Ansonia, Connecticut. Good evening. Um, good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Attorney Danielle Mercury. I work at the law firm of Brenner, Salzman, and Wallman in New Haven, and I represent the Walnut Beach Association and a variety of the individual uh, business owners in the area. Um, I think Attorney Lynch sort of uh, set the, uh, the, the plate here. Um, there were a variety of approvals back in November of 2015. Appeals were taken of those um, on behalf of these businesses, and really um, the motivation was to try to keep 
uh, more commercial uh, in this area, which is um, becoming quite a little commercial hub um, in Walnut Beach. And after a court decision, a petition for certification to the appellate court, and extensive discussions between um, the uh, developer and the plaintiffs, we were able to come to a resolution. Um, I think per staff's request, the, there was an official amendment to the site plan and special permit application and to the zoning regulations, which you folks just voted in favor of. Um, but under Connecticut general statutes, in order for us to proceed with the settlement of the appeal, we need to come before the board, get your uh, consent, and then we will go before Judge Hiller on Friday for his consent to officially settle this matter. Um, I forwarded um, to staff, and I know that you folks have a copy of the stipulation agreement that we will present to the board. Um, it does uh, refer to the plans that um, Mr. Wasmer uh, um, just presented to you folks. So on Naugatuck Avenue, we'll have the commercial units and uh, the residential above and then the residential on East Broadway. And then just some other um, items that were negotiated between the parties. Um, so I guess with that, um, if you folks have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, typically under 8-8N, for those of you that don't know, it doesn't technically require a public hearing, but the courts like to um, invite members to speak in, in favor or against, just so you folks have uh, the benefit of that. And after you vote, we will, um, if it's favorable, we'll present it to the court for an ultimate resolution. And um, I think as the uh, condo association said, I think everybody's excited to finally see these things built. And um, we have some really nice plans and, and we've worked hard to get to this point. So um, we ask for your consent. Thank you. Ms. Solka's uh, procedure here, is anyone else presenting anything? Um, I, not necessarily, no, unless they, they want to. And again, if you want to open it to the public per uh, what you just heard, just to give comment, you can. Uh, but you, being you just also had a public hearing on it, you, you know, you did get some public comment, but that's up to you. All right, thank you. Um, are there questions from the board members? On this, any comments or questions? Yes, Mr. Quick. Yeah, just a comment that um, I think it's a, a, a good compromise, and I'm happy that the parties got together and put the, the time and effort in to uh, to create something that's going to be a benefit to the uh, to, to the whole area. So I'm grateful that it turned out this way. I would uh, echo those comments as well. Is there other comments from the board? All right, before we uh, take a vote, I, I know, as Mr. Solka said, this is not a public hearing. It wasn't under that agenda, but I would invite anyone that would like to speak from the public on this. Uh, you're welcome to come in and share your comments. Okay, seeing none, at this time I would entertain a motion from the board uh, on this item. Mr. Barone. Um, I make a motion that we accept the proposed settlement agreement as stated. As, uh, as was in our packet. As, in our, as, as stated in our packet, yes. Okay. Is there... Um, is so, there Mr. A... Chair? Yes. Just to clarify, um, there's a motion to approve settlement uh, for Beach Shore Drive dated October 17th, 2017. Is that uh, the document that uh, Mr. Verone... That is. Uh, is. Okay. Yes, that is. Is there a second? Ms. Austin. Second. All right. Is there any comments or questions on the motion? All right. Seeing none, Mr. Collegian? With the motion. Mr. Dolan? With the motion. Ms. Austin? With the motion. Mr. Quish? With the motion. Mr. Barone? With the motion. Mr. Nickel? With the motion. And I am with the motion as well. Thank you. I believe that takes care of um, most of our business. We're to the chair report, and what I would like to do is I had, um, I know we've made a couple, we're trying to formalize things a little bit here, maybe just taking name votes instead of how we used to do things, so just from that standpoint. And I'd also like to get the board's input on when we have a public hearing what we do normally is the person presents, um, then we open it up to the public for 
comments uh, for it and then against it, then the person who presented has another opportunity to rebuttal that, then we have a rebuttal from the neighbors to what was rebuttaled. And I guess the, the thought would be is um, I want to just get the board's uh, thoughts on if they see the benefit to that or do we, should we do as we're doing but maybe skip that second rebuttal. I'm not sure how much extra information is, is gained from that, but I'm, I'm okay either way. But I just wanted to check with the board and get what everyone's thoughts were. Yeah, Mr. Question. Yeah, so um, I, I think that it's fairly uncommon that people come up again. Mm -hmm. But if there is something that was either new information or something that they now have uh, an interest in pursuing, I, I think it makes sense the way it is. I, I, I would also put, put out one point. I think that um, when there's like complicated plans, the public really hasn't had a chance to see those. So it might be smart in certain cases to give the public 10 minutes to come up and actually review the, uh, the, the print set. Because sure. I think that sometimes they look confused about what, um, what's being talked about. I think the visual uh, might be a, an, an asset and clarify some of their questions before they get up. All right. Any comments? Mr. Barone. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, I like the idea that the public has uh, some input into this and have some knowledge about it. Um, you know, a lot of times they don't understand what's going on because they don't see a lot of what goes on in the background. They may not understand the law uh, that, you know, we're bound by uh, or the way we rule on things. Uh, and they, I mean, this is their neighborhoods. Uh, the things that we decide are based on, uh, you know, what we think is going to be in the best interest of where they live. And, you know, the time and effort, so many times we hear uh, the general public, they've lived there 40 years, they put their whole life there. I think they should have a, a say in it. Yeah, oh, so I, agree. I, I don't disagree at all as far as being able to speak. I think the way it was done right now or what we're doing right now is we have a rebuttal, then you have a chance to rebuttal the rebuttal. Yeah. So it seems like it gets a little cumbersome at times. I'm not suggesting at all that the public shouldn't be involved, that they shouldn't have a chance to speak at all. I'm just asking no. you know, for that second rebuttal to the rebuttal. Yeah, I guess I'm agreeing that um, I think it's functional. Okay. I guess I'm agreeing with Mr. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, about, this about is that point. this is yeah. just for discussion. Yeah. Just, any other comments? I agree with him. And I think that being the board, we're going to have to put up with a lot of the statements that they reiterate and they go back to. But like these two gentlemen spoke to their the idea is starting to sink in and they're coming up with questions. So by just saying, you know, you're cut off, I don't think we'd be doing our job. And uh, I don't disagree with any of those comments and I'm not by any means suggesting that they cannot speak or shouldn't have the opportunity or if a thousand people want to say the same thing that they can't do that. I was just wondering that sometimes it seems as if the meeting once the rebuttal to the rebuttal happens, and then that's when we start to go back to something that was discussed before the rebuttal ever happened. So again, I'm, I'm not, this is, I'm just putting it out there just to see what everyone's thoughts were. Any other comments? All right, well, I would say consensus why it seems like we want to keep it uh, the way it is right now, and that's fine. Um, so, any liaison reports? Uh, regulation subcommittee, Mr. Grant is not here. Uh, I would entertain a motion for approval of minutes. Ms. Can, Barone? I make a motion to accept can the minutes. Can I just, um, yeah. because uh, John made an amendment to the, ninth, the September 19th minutes, can we vote to approve both the amended 19th oh, yeah. and also the October 3rd, please. Okay. I make a motion to accept both minutes. Second. Second. Ms. Austin, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Staff report. Uh, none this evening. All right. Okay, motion to adjourn. That's my job. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you.